In this video, we're going to look at the calculus of vector valued functions. So what we're going to start to do is do derivatives, which in turn means we're talking about tangent vectors when we do derivatives, which also gives us the unit tangent vector because we're talking about vectors. And then, of course, then we start doing the integration of vector value functions. We're going to first start out with a formal definition, which is the derivative of a vectored value function is defined as r prime of t, the limit as delta t goes to 0, of r of t plus delta t minus r of t over delta t. This, so this is similar to what we would expect in um, functions, regular functions, provided, of course, the limit exists. And if, it, if r prime exists, then r is differentiable at t. If r prime exists for an open interval, then r is differentiable over the entire open interval. And then if we are differentiating over a closed interval, that means I get to include the endpoints, then these two limits also must exist. So when we're talking about derivatives, we can think about derivatives as interpreting, one of the ways we can interpret the derivative is the slope of the tangent line, or we can also think of this as the instantaneous rate of change of the functions. So if we think about this as the instantaneous range of the function, then we can also think about this in terms of the derivative being the velocity. So if my original vector valued function is the position at some given time, then the derivative can be interpreted as the, as the velocity. And the second derivative can be interpreted as the acceleration. So this is a really nice definition, but this is how we are going to look at it. We're going to say, hey, if we have this function f, this function g and h, if we're in three space, then if I want to find the derivative of my vectored value function r of t, I can find the derivative of each individual function. And if I'm in three space, all I have now is three space. So if I'm asked to find the derivative of this given vector valued function, what I'm asked to do is do r prime, so r prime of t. And so I'm going to do the derivative of each individual component. So first I'm going to do the derivative of that, which gives me 3t squared i. Then I'm going to do the derivative of this, which is my g of t. And this is going to give me plus 6t j. And then I'm going to do the derivative of my last one, which is my last, last component. And that is my um, h of t. And so this is going to give me positive still 3t squared over 6, which of course can reduce. So we're going to go ahead and write this in reduced form of t squared over 2. So t squared over um, 2. And so that's my derivative. So go ahead and pause the video and see if you can find the derivative of the second one. Welcome back. Hopefully what you have for r prime of t, the derivative of sine is cosine, so that's the cosine of t, i. The derivative of cosine is negative sine t of j, and e to the t is e to the t all day long, so e to the t times my k component. Now these are all components, so you may want to write hats over them, so they are the vector components. Now let's expand a little bit on the idea of vectors and derivatives. Our first idea is that if we have this constant multiplied by our vector valued function, it's just a scalar multiplier. And of course, if I have a two vector valued functions that I'm adding or subtracting and I want to do the derivative, it is going to be equal to the derivative of each one, plus or minus. So if we're adding, it'll be a plus. If it's a minus, we're subtracting. If I have the function f of t times my vector valued function, then it would be the derivative, like it's almost like doing the product rule, the derivative of my f function multiplied by my um, vector valued function, and then my f of t, u prime of t. Now, this is the dot product. This was a scalar product. This f of t was a scalar this is a dot product of two vector valued functions, and it's just like what we expect with our product. Um, in, if we would have had two, um, 
two functions, and not vector valued functions, but two regular functions, it's the product rule. So it is going to be the dot product of those two. So the derivative of the first vector valued dotted with the initial second one, and then the initial first one dotted with the vector valued function derivative of the second. The cross product is slightly different. It's still almost like the product rule that we would expect to see in regular functions. In this case, we're going to do the cross product. Notice how these are very, very similar. One I do a dot product, the other one I do a cross product. And then of course we get the chain rule. So if I have r being my um, vectored value function and inside my inner function is f of t, then it's going to be my derivative as I expect of r of my vector valued function derivative. And then don't forget to do the derivative of the inner function. And then of course, if r of t dotted with r of t is a constant, then r of t dotted with its derivative will be zero. So let's go through an example here where we are asked to find the derivative of the cross product. So one of the things that we could do is we could do the derivative of each one and then do the cross product of the two resulting. Or I can do the cross product first and do the derivative. I'm going to show you both ways you're going to get the same answer. I'm going to first do the cross product. So I'm going to do r of t crossed with u of t. So this is going to be equal to, and I know this is going to be the determinant of i, j, and k. I'm going to put my r first, so that's 2, 3t, and t squared. My u second, which is 4t plus, or that's t squared, excuse me, and then t cubed. So then when I do this cross product, it's going to be 2 t to the fourth i. And then remember, it would have been a minus. And then here, I would have had t to the fourth minus 4 t to the third. And that would be the j component. And then plus my k component, which would have been um, t cubed minus 12 t squared in the k component. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull this negative through so it just makes it a little bit easier when I'm doing derivatives. So I have 2t to the fourth i and then plus and because I'm going to pull that negative in they'll switch position the the two terms will switch position and switch sign so I'm going to have 4t cubed minus t to the fourth j and then plus, and I have t cubed minus 12t squared, the k component. Now I'm going to do the derivative of this. So I first did my cross product. So I have d dt of r of t crossed with u of t, which is d dt of this vector valued function. Just write this out again. 4t cubed minus t to the fourth j and then plus t to the third plus 2t squared. Oh, it's actually 12. What? Okay. I kind of wrote that fast, so that should be plus, or excuse me, minus 12, not plus. So I don't want to do it again. Minus 12t squared in the k direction. And so what I end up with when I'm done with my derivative is going to be 8t to the third i. And then plus, inside I'm going to get 12t squared minus 4t cubed in the j direction. Don't forget my hats. Plus 3t squared minus 24t in the k direction. Now... If you are inclined to do the derivative of each one first and then do the cross product, you are going to get the exact same answer. So what I mean by that is what you could do is you can do the derivative of r. And the derivative of r is going to just be i plus 3j plus 4t 
plus 2t in the k direction. Now you could take that and do the cross product of that and cross it with my u of t. And then I would find my derivative of u of t, excuse me, which is equal to 4 in the i, uh, 2t in the j, and 3t squared in the k. I would then do the cross product of that with my r of t. And then when I got done, I would add those two vectors together and I would get that answer. Now, personally, I think it's easier to do the cross product up front in this case and then do the derivative of that. Totally up to you, however. Now let's take a look to see what happens when, it, when we do the dot product. Now we know that by definition, the dot product here is gonna be r prime of t dotted with s of t plus r of t dotted with s prime of t. Now I'm actually considering doing the dot product first and seeing if I get the exact same answer as if I were to do the derivative of each one and then the dot product. So if I do the dot product first, by component I have t, t squared, negative t to the fourth, and then I have the sine of t, and then plus, actually I don't want the plus there, I want e of t, and then I have the cosine of t. So my dot product first would be to multiply these two together. And so I'm going to have t times the sine of t um, is the first one. And then I'm going to have plus. I'm going to do these two. So that's plus t squared e to the t. And then plus, and then my last one is going to be negative t to the fourth cosine of t. Now I'm going to take the derivative of this, so d dt, and I have to do the product rule. So the derivative of the first two is going to be equal to, the derivative of t is 1, so it would be 1 times the sine of t, and then plus the derivative of cosine, which is cosine, so it would be t cosine of t. That's this first derivative using the product rule and then plus, and then I'm gonna have the derivative of 2t, which is gonna be, or derivative of t squared, which is 2t, e to the t, and then I'm gonna have the derivative of e to the t, so this is gonna be plus t squared e to the t, which is e to the t all day long, so that's that derivative. Now I'm gonna do my last derivative, which is gonna be negative 4t to the third, cosine of t, and then I'm going to do the derivative of cosine, so it would be negative t to the fourth. The derivative of cosine is negative sine t. And so my final answer, I'm looking to see if I have anything I can combine up, and it does not look like it. So my final answer is the sine of t um, plus t, the cosine of t. I might write all my sine and cosine stuff first. And then I have minus 4t cubed cosine of t plus t to the fourth, the sine of t. And then my e stuff, my e shenanigations, which is 2t e to the t, and then plus t squared e to the t. And that actually is the exact same answer if I would have done the derivative of r first and then the dot with the dot product with s and then the derivative of s with the dot product of r six of one half a dozen of another depends on how you look at it okay so now let me move this up and out of the way i don't know why that always does that to me okay now we're going to look at the tangent vectors and the unit tangent vectors so when we're doing the derivative, we are getting the tangent vector to the curve represented by the function. To do the principal unit tangent vector, 
then that is the derivative of my vector valued function divided by the magnitude. So it's our usual unit vector shenanigations. There's nothing new here. This part is not new. So if I'm asked to find a tangent vector and then the principal unit tangent vector of the indicated value at a specific point in time, what that's asking me to do is find the derivative evaluated at that t value and then find the unit vector. So let's go through this. So r prime, r prime of t is going to be the derivative of t is just one i, so i hat. And then the derivative of sine out, there is a chain rule that has to happen. So this is going to be plus 2, the cosine of 2t in the j direction. And the same thing is going to happen here. I've got a um, chain rule, so it's going to be minus derivative of cosine is negative sine, so it'd be negative 3 because of the derivative of the inner function, which is 3t, the sine of 3t in the k direction, k hat. Now, if I want to evaluate it, r prime at pi thirds, then this is going to be i hat, that's not going to change anything, plus 2 times the cosine of 2 pi over 3, in the j direction, minus 3, the sine of 3 times pi over 3 in the k direction. Now, what ends up happening is this ends up just being i, and then I have plus 2, the cosine of 2 pi over 3 is negative 1 half in the j direction, and then minus 0 k. Okay, because of the fact that the sine of pi is zero. So my final answer for the tangent vector is i minus j. Now, the principal unit vector is going to be that vector divided by the magnitude. So my principal unit vector, which is with a capital T of little t, when you see that notation, it's saying I have the principal unit vector. This is going to be equal to my i minus j divided by the magnitude. The magnitude of this is going to be the square root of 1 plus negative 1 squared. So it's going to be 1 over the square root of 2. And then it's i minus j, or I can write it as 1 over the square root of 2, 1, negative 1, and 0. So that is the principal unit vector. It's not a lot of change from what we did before when we were looking for a unit vector. It's still the vector divided by the magnitude. And all that means is that it has a length of 1, still in the same direction. It just has a magnitude or a length of 1. That's all it is. Now, we know that when we have the position function, when we're not in when we're not in the vector valued functions, that if we have the position function, the first derivative is the velocity, the second derivative is the acceleration, and the speed is the absolute value, in other words, the magnitude of the velocity. So they're asking me to find first the velocity and the speed function on this example. So the first thing I'm going to do is find the derivative, so f prime of not f, r prime, r prime of t. Now, the first component of this lovely vector is going to need to have the uh, chain rule, not the chain rule, but the quotient rule. So I'm going to do the derivative of the numerator. So the derivative of 12, 2t minus 12 is just 2 multiplied by the denominator minus the derivative of the denominator multiplied by the numerator all divided by the denominator squared. And that is in the i direction. In the j direction, we're doing the derivative of the natural log. So that's going to be 1 over 1 minus 4t squared. And then that's going to be multiplied by the derivative of 1 minus 4t squared, which is going to be negative 8t. And that is in the j direction. Let's just kind of clean this up just a little bit. 
So this will give me 2t um, plus t, or plus 2. This is minus 2t. Oh, so my t go away. And this becomes a plus um, 12. So in my numerator, I'm going to get 14. And then I have t plus 1, the quantity squared, plus 1 over, well, actually, it'll be negative 8 over negative 8 t over 1 minus 4 t squared in the j direction. Don't forget my hat in the i direction. And what this is is the velocity function with respect to time. Now it's asking me for the speed. It's asking me for the magnitude. So this is going to be r uh, prime of t magnitude, which means this is going to be equal to the square root of my first component. So it's going to be 14 over t plus 1 squared, the quantity squared, plus negative 8t over 1 minus 4t squared, the quantity squared. And I'm going to pretty much leave it in that condition. And that is my speed equation for um, that um, position vector valued function. Whew. Okay, now it's asking me to find the locate the highest point. So remember, when we're doing derivatives, one of the things I get is slopes of tangents. The other thing I get is it tells me critical points. So this is still going to be true. I'm still going to find critical points by, when, by doing derivatives. So that means the first thing I'm going to do is find the derivative. So r, r prime of t is going to be 6 and then 6 minus 2t. So I'm going to set my derivative equal to 0. This one makes no sense to set this equal to 0. That makes no sense. So I'm going to set this one equal to 0. So I have 6 minus 2t is equal to 0. So that tells me that t is equal to 3. So when t is 3, I have a critical point. I think it's going to be my highest point, but I'm not really certain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see what's happening on either side of 3. I want to know sign chart, think sign chart. Am I coming at increasing or am I leaving decreasing? What's happening? So I'm looking at 6 minus 2t. I want to know what's happening on one side of 3 and the other side of 3. So I'm going to choose something over here. So I'm going to say, hey, let's try t equals 2. When t equals 2, this is positive. When t equals 4, this is negative. So I'm coming in positive. I'm leaving negative. That tells me that I'm at a local or possibly an absolute maxima. So I, since I only have one critical point, it's my absolute maxima. So the location is when t is equal to 3. I want the value of the function, not the vector valued function. So the way in which I determine where this location is, is I put this t into each component and find the x and y that is related to that. So I have 6 times 3, which gives me 18. This is my x part in my regular function that is being described by this vector valued function. And then my y is going to be 6 times 3 minus 3 squared. And so my y value happens to be 9. So when x is 18, my highest point is 9. Okay, so of course, we're also going to be asked to find the parametric form of the tangent line to the image of this vector valued function at a given time. We need two things. We need an intercept and we need the slope of the tangent. To find the intercept, I'm going to put that into I'm going to put that 2 into this function here. So I'm just going to put 2 into here. So my intercept is going to be, I'm going to have 12, so it's 2 times, it's 2 squared times 3, so 12. 
and then 3 over 2, and then negative 2. That is my intercept. Now I need the slope. So I'm going to do the derivative. So I'm going to do the derivative of my f prime of t equals. And so this is going to give me 6t uh, minus 3t over t squared, and then 1. I'm going to do f prime of 2, so I'm going to evaluate this at 2, which gives me 12, negative 3 fourths, and 1. My linear parametric equation is of the form, my intercept, which is 12, 3 halves, negative 2, plus t, because that's my, my unknown, instead of x we have t, and the slope, which is 12, negative 3 fourths. And one. So the things that we did before with our derivatives, we're going to continue to do. It's just going to look slightly different, but the way that in which we're going to approach it is going to be like we did before. So the next part we're going to look at is integrals of vector value functions, because if I can do a derivatives, I must be able to integrate this. So if I have an indefinite, which means I don't have the limits here, the limits of integration, then I do the integration of each one individually. And then I have to do, when I do the integration, when I integrate this, I'll have a plus C1 for this one. And then I'll have plus C2 for this one. If I have a third one like this, then I have a plus C3. So I have constants on each one of these when I integrate if they're indefinite integrations. If it's a definite integral, then notice that I'm in, in the integration of each piece individually, and then the limits of integration don't change unless, of course, I've had to do u substitution, which could happen, but let's hope it doesn't. So let's take a look at my first one here. I want to find the integration of this. So this means that I'm going to integrate each one individually, integration of e to the t, dt, dt, and then this is going to be the i component plus the integral of the sine of t dt in the j direction. And then my last one is going to be the integral of 1 over 2t minus 1 dt in the k direction. So doing my first integration here, this gives me e to the t. We love e to the t, plus my c1. This one, if I get sine as my derivative, then I must have started out with a negative, negative cosine, excuse me, negative cosine of t plus c2. Now, this is in the i direction, and this is in the j direction. I need to do this one as well, and this looks to me like a u substitution. Let u equal 2t minus 1, and du is equal to 2dt. So 1 half du is equal to dt. And so what I really have then is this integral is from 1 over u multiplied by 1 half du. This is in the k direction. So this is going to be plus 1 half the natural log of the 2t minus 1 plus my c3 in the k direction. Now let's just clean this up a little bit because this is kind of sloppy. So what I have, this is equal to e to the t in the i direction minus the cosine of t in the j direction plus 1 half the natural log of 2t minus 1 in the k direction, and then plus, I'm going to take care of my constants. So my constant 1 in the i direction, and that's a c, not an e. It's a terrible looking c. And then my constant 2 in the, the j direction, and then my constant 3 in the k direction. So that is my final answer. And you're going to ask me, can I, com can I combine these into 1c? And the answer is no, because they're, uh, those constants are a 
attached to those directions, those unit vectors in the i, j, k for, um, direction. So no, you can't just do that. Okay, let's take a look at my next one. And this one is kind of nice because I have limits of integration, so I don't have to worry about the plus k shenanigation. So if I'm asked to integrate from 0 to 1 of this function, then I'm going to integrate from 0 to 1 of uh, t raised to the 1 third dt in the i direction plus 0 to 1 of 1 over t plus 1 dt dt in the j direction, and my hat, don't forget my hat, and then plus from 0 to 1 of e to the negative t dt in the k direction. So let's go ahead and do each individual one in, the, in here. So I want to erase this. It's not what this is equal to. I don't want to muddy the waters. It's not equal to that. We talked about what that one's equal to. Okay, so my first derivative is going to be, um, I'm going to add t, I'm going to add 1 to it, and then divide by that. So I'm going to get uh, 3 fourths t raised to the 4 thirds evaluated from 0 to 1 in the i direction. And you're thinking, can I drop these? No, no, you cannot. You cannot drop these i, j's, and k's and just say, bam, here's the answer. No, no, big no. How about a no on that one? And then plus the natural log of the absolute value of t plus 1. I should be putting absolute values each time. Evaluated from 0 to 1 in the j direction. And then this one gives me negative e to the negative t. Um, evaluated from 0 to 1. I'll do it this way. In the k direction. So I like it when I see t to the 0 and 1 because I know that t to the 0 is 0. So this first part is just going to be 3 fourths in the i direction. That's kind of nice. Plus, and when I put in 0, I'm going to get the natural log of 1, which is 0. So I don't have to really worry about that one. So this is going to be the natural log of 2 in the k direction, the natural log of 2, or excuse me, in the j direction. And then I might put that in parentheses so it doesn't do, look something weird. And then my last one, of course, this is the one where you do have to worry about the zero. So when I put in a zero, I'm not going to get zero. I'm going to get um, e raised to the zero, which is going to be one. So this last one, I'm going to have plus. When I put in one, I'm going to have negative e to the negative one. And then minus a minus e raised to the 0 in the k direction. Now I'm just going to clean this up. So that's what it should be. I'm just going to clean this up. And um, I'm going to end up with 1 uh, minus 1 over e in the k direction. I just don't feel like rewriting it again. So forgive me. k direction. Okay. So there is my answer. Bam. I don't have to worry about putting on the C sub 1 in the I, C sub 2 in the J, and C sub 3 in the K. There it is. Okay, here we go. I got a couple more examples, so bear with me. What they're asking me to do is they're asking me to find the initial velocity and the initial position. The acceleration function is given to me. This is the velocity at the given time of v naught or v of zero and r of zero. These two things are going to help me find my plus c shenanigation. So if this is a of t, that means that I have done the second derivative, d d2, of my r of t and it will equal negative 5, the cosine, 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 the cosine, cosine of t in the i, minus 5 sine t in the j. That's what that means. So let's do our first derivative so we could figure out what the velocity is. So I'm going to integrate this. And I have negative 5 cosine of t 
dt in the i direction, and then minus five, uh, yeah, I'm gonna do plus a minus five, the sine of t dt in the j direction. Don't forget those hats. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the integration and I when I integrate this, I know that I'm gonna get negative five, the sine of t um, plus c sub one i, must be multiplied in the i in the i direction. And then I'm gonna have minus, so it's gonna be plus five, the cosine of t, um, plus c sub two in the j direction. So the thing is though, is that we have that when we put in zero, when we put in zero, this is what gets kicked out. So this is gonna help me figure out what these constants are. So right now I have negative five, the sine of t in the i direction, plus c sub one in the i direction, plus five, the cosine of t in the j direction, plus c sub two, in the j direction. Now what I know is when I put in f, not f, when I put in r or v of zero, so when I evaluate this, remember I found that this is my v, my v of t. Now when I evaluate it at zero, this thing had better equal negative nine i plus two j. So we have this initial value information so that I can figure out what my constants are gonna be. When I put in zero into this part right here, the sine of zero is zero. Since this thing ends up going to zero, my c sub one has to be nine, has to be a negative nine. So when I do v, so I'm gonna take this function up above. So now I'm gonna do this v of zero is equal to negative five, the sine of zero in the i direction, plus c sub one in the i direction. Now the sine of zero goes to zero. These two combined has to equal negative nine i. So that means my c sub one is negative nine. Hat, hat. And then plus five, the cosine of zero in the j direction, plus c sub two in the j direction. This gives me five in the j direction plus c sub two in the j direction, but this has to equal two j. So that tells me the only way that's gonna happen is if c sub two is equal to negative three. Cool. So I now know what my velocity is. My velocity, I'm gonna go back and replace my c's and in the appropriate places. This c sub one, we know it happens to be negative nine. So this gets replaced with a negative nine. This c sub two is negative three. So this gets replaced with negative three. So I'm just gonna rewrite this to make it a little bit easier because I'm gonna to have to do the integration a second time. So v of t is going to be equal to negative 5, the sine of t minus 9 in the i direction, hat, plus 5, the cosine of t minus 3 in the j direction. I have to now integrate one more time because it wants the position vector. So now I'm gonna integrate this. I have negative five, the sine of t minus nine dt in the i direction, plus five, the cosine of t minus three dt in the j direction. 
and this is going to give me my position vector, my S of T, if you will. So I'm going to go ahead and integrate this, and when I integrate the negative 5 sine, it's going to give me 5 cosine of T minus 9T plus C sub 1 in the I direction, and then plus... I do the integration of 5 cosine, it gives me 5 the sine of t minus 3t plus c sub 2 in the j direction. Now I go back to what, this was my first answer. Now I go back to my initial value part and it says when I put in 0, 5i comes out. So this is my s of t. Now I'm going to use the initial value and find s of 0. When I put in 0, only 5i comes out. So s, s of 0 is equal to. Now I'm going to put 0 in here. So I have 5, the cosine of 0, minus 9 times 0, plus c sub 1 in the i direction. And this needs to equal 5i. Well, the cosine of 0 is 1. So this, so let me do this. So 5 times 1 minus 0 plus c sub 1 has to equal 5. So c sub 1, this only happens when c sub 1 is equal to 0. So when I come back up here, I know that this is 0. So I can just totally erase that whole part. That's kind of nice. Now let's do the second part. So then plus 5 the sine of 0 minus 3 multiplied by 0 plus c sub 2 in the j direction. Now, since this is plus 0j, hat, then I know that this, when I, when I do its calculation, had better equal 0. So 5 times the sine of 0, which is 0, minus 3, which is 0, plus c sub 2 has to equal 0. c sub 2 is equal to 0. So I come back over here, and that is my final vector. I'm just going to rewrite this so it's a little nicer. So my second answer here then is s of t is equal to 5 cosine of t minus 9t in the i direction plus 5 the sine of t minus 3t in the j direction. And that is my second solution, first one being that one up there for the velocity and this being my position vector, valued function. Okay, so I just have a couple of more to do. I'm gonna erase, hopefully you all had some good notes because I need to erase this space so I can now look at the la second to last question. So let me come on in and look at this second to last question. Here we go. Lock the rotation on this. Okay, so we are going to evaluate this. Now, these double lines means that I'm, what I'm really doing is I'm going to find the, um, the magnitude. And the way I find my magnitude, if you remember, is that it's going to be the square root of my t squared plus the t squared squared. This is equal to the magnitude of t in the i direction plus t squared in the j direction. So what they're really asking me to do is they're really asking me to integrate from 0 to 3 of the square root of. Well, this is t squared plus t to the fourth dt. Well, I can factor out a t, so that's nice. So I'm going to have from 0 to 3, I'm going to factor out a t. 
leave me 1 plus t squared dt. I factored out a t squared. t squared here, as a reminder, this is t squared 1 minus, or 1 plus t squared, and I can take the square root of each one individually. That's where that came from, which now says boom, boom, boom. I can do u substitution if I need to. And if I need to, then I'd say, oh, let u equal 1 plus t squared du is equal to 2t dt, 1 half u, or 1 half du is equal to t dt. And if you are going to use u substitution, please do not forget to change your limits of integration or to... Uh, waiting for this to catch up, to remember to go back and um, put those back in place. So I'm going to change my limits of integration here. When uh, t is equal to 0, u is equal to 1. When t is equal to 3, u is equal to 10. So then this becomes from 1 to 10, of 1 half u du, which is a whole heck of a lot easier to manage, and um, should be 1 half u to the 1 half. My apologies, u to the 1 half. Okay, so stuff just keeps coming, doesn't it? That last question just kind of spread all over the place. All right, so what we then have is me messing around with this for a few minutes because I can. Keeps, whatever. Anyways, let's go ahead and do this derivative. So I'm gonna add the um, one half, I'm gonna do my regular integration, I'm gonna add one to one half and I'm gonna divide by it so I have one half divided by uh, two, three halves, which is two multiplied by two thirds, u to the three halves, evaluated from one to 10. So this is going to be 1 third, and then it's going to be 10 raised to the 3 halves minus 1. And I'm probably just going to leave it like that. So that's my final answer. Okay, find the solution of the differential equa equation given the initial conditions. So this is a lot like what I did before. And if you're thinking, am I should I take differential equations next quarter? Well, here is an introduction to it. What we know is r of t is going to be the integration of the sine of 2t, the sine of 7t, and 9t dt. So we know that holds true. So let's go ahead and integrate these individually. So this is going to be the integration of the sine of 2t, dt in the i direction plus the integral of the sine of 7t dt in the j direction, hat, don't forget your hats, plus the integral of 9t dt in the j hat direction, don't forget your hats. So let's go ahead and integrate the first one. My first integration is going to be negative 1 half the cosine of 2t plus c sub 1 in the i direction. And then this is going to be plus 1, negative 1 sevenths, the cosine of 7t plus c sub 2 in the j hat direction. And this one's the nicest one. The nicest one is the plus um, 9 halves t squared plus c sub 3 in the k hat direction. Now we're going to use the initial value, like I did before, and I know r of 0. So I'm going to put an r of 0. r, <laughs> r of 0. So this is going to be negative 1 half the cosine of 0 plus c sub 1 i hat. 
and then plus negative 1 7th cosine of 0 plus c sub 2 j hat plus, ooh, this one's nice, 0 plus c sub 3 k hat. However, what I know is that from the initial value that the first component has to equal this first component, which is 2. The second component has to equal this second component, which is 4. And my final component, bam, that's this one, has to also equal 4. So, like we did before, I know that cosine of 0 is 1. So negative 1 half plus c sub 1 has to equal 2. That means c sub 1 must be equal to 2 plus 1 half, which gives me, what, 3 halves? 3 halves. So we got our first one. And then we know that negative 1 7th plus c sub 2 has to equal 4 because the cosine of 0 is 4. So c sub 2 must be 4 and 1 7 which is 28, 29 7 29 fourths, I mean. And then my last one is easy. We love this one. We know c sub 3 has to equal 4. So now I can go back and say my r of t is going to be equal to negative 1 half the cosine of t plus 3 halves in the i direction plus negative 1 seventh the cosine of 7t. Ooh, and I think that should be 2t. Let me go back. Oh, 2t. 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 2 for t. Um, and then plus 29 fourths in the K, J, K, L, M, and the J direction, J hat. And then my last one, which is the 9 halves T squared plus 4 in the K direction. And I have solved my initial value problem. Um, and, uh, oh. I think I added wrong. Two and a half is not three halves. Two and a half is five halves. Eh, it's late. So five halves, my apologies, five halves. Five halves, right there, five halves. Okay, and that's it. We've solved this initial value differential equation. Bam. That's it for seven for 3.2. It's not hard really it's just looking at derivatives and integrations in a slightly different manner and tomorrow when we go over this in class or if we go over it on monday i want to show you the graphical interpretation of this so you can see the connection so that's it for today we will take a look at this in class